In this little clip, we're going to talk about removing a rotating assembly, reinstalling a rotating assembly. This happens to be a standard T-series pump, uh, which we call a PL. One of the first things that you're going to encounter is you're going to say, hey, those guys have got like a little lifty eye with a hook and a crane, and that's cheating. Well, if you had a lifty eye and a hook, you could cheat too. However, this is a half-inch pipe plug that's here. The traditional way of, of making a lift eye is to screw a piece of half-inch pipe in there, a short nipple, maybe put a T on the end of it, a threaded T. That gives you a knob that you can wrap a strap around and you can lift it up. So now you've got a lifting mechanism or a lifting point. Once you've got a lifting point established, then you need some way to lift it. You, know, you can build a swing set, you can build an overhead hoist, whatever it takes. Don't try to do it by hand, you'll hurt yourself. So we've got a lifting point to take the weight of this rotating assembly mechanism. The bolts that hold the rotating assembly in the back of the pump are not finger tight when you get them, but again, for the purposes of this discussion, most of them are finger tight. Excuse me while I jump sides here. So we've zipped these bolts out. On a standard T-series pump, you'll see there's two sets of holes here. One of these holes is going to be clear for the bolt to clear. The other one's going to have threads in it. They're there for a reason. Most of the problems we have replacing parts on a rotating assembly are from the ears being broken off, from somebody trying to pry the rotating assembly out, which can be a difficult procedure. If you use equal force with the built-in jack bolt locations, you'll have much better success. A unique feature of the Phantom PL series pumps is that we have socket head cap screws that are located where you would normally have the threaded holes for the jack bolts. The socket head cap screws allow you to establish your impeller setting and leave that impeller setting set or make rapid changes using an Allen wrench. What I'm going to do is use the Allen wrench to back out the socket head cap screws that apply pressure against the back of this rotating assembly. If it was a standard T-series pumps, I'd take the bolts that I'd removed from the rotating assembly, I'd install them in the threaded holes, and as I tightened them, the same jacking assembly would take place. So as I endeavor to make certain that I apply even pressure to these ears, knowing that this one comes out easy because we planned it that way, yours might be much more difficult to get out. The rotating assembly is coming out of the back of the pump as we speak. So once the O-ring is clear, now that we can support the rate of the rotating assembly with the hook, it's just a question of guiding the rest of the bearing housing out of the back of the pump, at which case it will hang free. So turns out the rotating assembly was not the problem with this pump because it looks brand new and it spins freely. If yours looks this way, put it back together, you're good to go. If not, we got a new one. Inside the pump, after you've removed the rotating assembly, you'll be able to inspect the condition of the wear plate. The wear plate is a quarter inch thick metal plate that's bolted to the suction cover which is where the front of the impeller rides. So the clearance between the wear plate and the front of the impeller is critical in establishing the efficiency of the pump. The larger the gap, the more product recirculates in the pump, the more wear you're going to see. Again, the distance between the face of the impeller and the wear plate is established by on the super T or on the I'm sorry the PL series pump by the position of these socket head screws. On your T series pump, there'll be some washers that are installed between the back of the rotating assembly and the pump. These are critical to maintain the impeller clearance. If you assemble the rotating assembly and bolt it in place and the impeller doesn't turn, there's a good chance you don't have enough clearance between the impeller and the back of the pump. So now you have a new rotating assembly. The O-ring is in place and intact. You've greased the guide so that the assembly will go into place. 
To install the new rotating assembly, it's the reverse procedure from the old assembly. We'll guide it into the back of the pump. We'll reinstall the screws. It needs to rotate about three degrees to get the screws to line up. And then we'll adjust the impeller clearance and we've got a free turning pump. Don't forget to check the oil for the seal housing and for the bearing housing to make certain that you don't forget to fill the oil. Other than that, you can reprime the pump at that point by adding liquid at the fill port and you're ready to run again.